Welcome to Between the Reads, where we shine a spotlight on some of the most talented black authors in the industry to discuss their works of fiction and the inspirations behind them. Each episode, we'll dive into the rich and diverse world of literature, exploring everything from historical fiction to romance and speculative fiction to YA and beyond. Tune in as we celebrate the voices of black authors and the power of storytelling. Are you ready, booze and bros? Then sit back, relax, and let's get to it. D.L. White is the oldest of three children to Marvin, a U.S. Air Force retired serviceman, and Angela White, a retired aircraft machinist. She grew up on various Air Force bases until the family settled in Spokane, Washington, where they remain today. D.L. White began pursuing a writing career in 2011 after enjoying a lifetime of reading and hobby writing. In 2015, she published Brunch at Ruby's, an upmarket contemporary fiction novel that explores the lives of three best friends and the soul food cafe at the center of their friendship. Since then, she has published 10 black romance and women's fiction titles in ebook, print, and audio formats with more to come. A 1996 graduate of Eastern Washington University, D.L. holds a Bachelor of Arts in Interpersonal Communication Studies and minored in teaching English as a second language, as a second or foreign language. By day, D.L. is an executive assistant for a global beverage brand. By night, she writes, reads, and lives in the metro Atlanta area. D.L. has a legendary love for coffee, fried chicken, and brunch, especially on a patio. Her true obsession is water, lakes, rivers, oceans, waterfalls. When not writing books, D.L. devours them. She enjoys romance, contemporary and historical black fiction, mystery, thrillers, and suspense novels. She shares her thoughts on books and writing at booksbydlwhite.com slash blog. D.L., welcome back for time number three to Between the Reads. Third time is the charm. (laughs) It is. It is. I'm happy to be back on Between the Reads. Listen, I am happy to have you back. You know, you are always welcome. Once I get, I got to get through the rest of your catalog. I just might have a whole section of the, of the podcast called DL White. (laughs) They're not going nowhere. (laughs) They're not going nowhere. That's what you always say. They're not going nowhere. (laughs) For now. So, (laughs) for now, they better not go. Well, I have them on my Kindle, so they ain't going nowhere. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. So, tell us what Hey Lover is all about. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I've been thinking about how to answer this because I'm not, like, I'm not, I'm not a deep person. Like, I just get an idea and I'm like, oh, that sounds fun. Let's write that. And <laughs> so then I, I write it. Hey Lover is a story about finding, getting a second chance with that person you were meant to be with, getting a second chance with your soulmate. Um, It's about two lovers who were deeply, desperately in love when they were young, and one of them went through some trials and tribulations and decided to step away from the relationship. And um, there was, of course, Malik, and India said, hey, you do what you got to do. I might not be here when you're ready to come back. And so after Malik has gone through a self transformation and he has come back and he's seeing India out in the media and she's doing her thing and she's making moves, snapping necks and cashing Mm -hmm. checks. Mm -hmm. And he feels that longing for her again. And he wonders Mm -hmm. if he knocks, will that door open again? And so, Hey Lover is about him knocking and Mm -hmm. seeing if that door, what happens after? (laughs) Right. Yeah. It's just something fun that I wanted to write. It's definitely not the pinnacle of literary fiction. Um, It is just I I needed to publish something. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I had started that project in 2019. um, And I was like, um, with a lot of my work, I pick up something I started years ago. And I'm like, "Ah, I'm going to finish this. So Mm -hmm. I decided to finish it. So Yes, so that's a good uh, lesson for all you writers out there. When you write stuff, don't throw throw anything away. away. I save everything. It might, Mm -hmm. it'll show up somewhere in something. Mm Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, absolutely. Now, we're going to get to the writing process a little later in the show. Because I heard some things on your your podcast. Okay. Tell us the inspiration for Hey Lover. The inspiration for this song is the song for this <laughs> is the song. I was just like driving probably to work or 
I don't know, Kroger's. <laughs> and I listen to um, satellite radio because I'm bougie mm-hmm. like that. Uh-huh, me too. <laughs> and I listen to um, LL Cool J's um, Sirius XM, bells. Rock the Bells, love Rock the Bells. Mm-hmm. And Hey Lover came on, and I was like, oh, I love the song. And I was, like, listening to the lyrics. And as it happens, like, just the story starts to write itself in my brain. Mm-hmm. And um, I wouldn't say, like, word for word the lyrics represent the song because, hey, the song is actually a little stalkery a little <laughs> obsessory a little i've been watching you in a really creepy way but also very romantic right you know it toes right. it toes the line it really stands right on that line between that's so awesome and go away right. um right, right, but right. like the 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 nugget of the story started to come to me just listening to that song like music um Music kind of gives us snippets of relationships and times in history and feelings, emotion. Mm -hmm. It just gives us like little snippets. And I always think of it as something to build on. So I, you know, took a little germ of what happened and wrote a little bit about it. And then I put it away. But I just kind of wanted to write a little bit about what I was thinking about when I heard that song, like what, what came to mind hearing the lyrics and that that is where it started mm, okay so we have india tony malik of course there are other characters but mm-hmm. those are kind of the three at the forefront a little bit mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and stina we and have stina. her too mm-hmm. um let's start with the most trifling of those three and do i even need to tell you Let's talk about Ooh. Tony. <laughs> Can we please? Let's. Let's. Because I like, I like, I like writing this kind of dude. It's Maxine in Brunch at uh, Ruby's. It's, uh, I like writing this person. Because I like for people to get in my DMs and be like, girl, girl. What? I love that. I, I love it. Let's talk about Tony. Please. Super. Fi- I mean, ew. Yeah. Ew, superficial, clout chaser, you know, small dick energy, Mm. Mm. you know, not Mm. good in bed, so definitely compensates for his lack of prowess. He doesn't have the juice, (laughs) but he thinks he has the juice. He has the confidence of a man that has the juice. Mm. He doesn't have the juice. He does not have the juice. So what was the inspiration for him? Where did he come from? So Tony was just, I needed, um, I didn't want to write another heroine that was laying in a bed pining away for the man who got away. Mm -hmm. Even though she was pining for the man who got away, she just sort of slid somebody into that slot so nobody else could get into it Mm -hmm. just in case. Mm-hmm. In my view, just in case right. Malik happened to pop up, it just happened to take, you know, this long for it, for him to come back around. Mm-hmm. Um, I needed her to be in a situation that she could easily get out of mm-hmm. that wasn't real. And I also like some of my best author friends are writing these fake dating, fake marriage books. Mm-hmm. And I don't like the trope. I mm-hmm. don't I don't like the trope because I don't understand how in Western modern American culture, anybody can tell a person you can't have this unless you have certain status in life or certain marital status. Like how? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that doesn't make sense to me. Like right. I could get like marriage of convenience if it's say like J.C. Lee writes these amazing romances about Asians who um, their parents have arranged marriages for them and they mm-hmm. don't want to participate in that ritual and right. so they like quick hurry marry somebody so right. that they're now not available to be married off by their parents right um in desi culture in asian culture i get i, I get that right. mm, i don't get it in american culture so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i kind of i wanted to play with that and i wanted to poke fun at the fake relationship a bit and so I wrote her into a relationship that wasn't all that real. Mm -hmm. Um, It wasn't passionate. It wasn't loving. It was very surface and convenient for both of them. 
and I just, I really needed her to be into something she was ready to get out of. Um, and so that is, is, I also didn't want anyone to, I didn't want anyone to be sympathetic to Tony. Girl. I didn't want, I don't want her to have to choose. What I wanted her to gladly shove him aside for the man she is meant to be with. And so that is, Listen, that is where Tony came I, from. We're not going to give anything away, but all I'm going to say is that situation wasn't even necessary because I was not feeling his ass. You your 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 girlfriend is is having a major dinner for a major success and you have a deposition yes right you couldn't get out of that you for right real? yeah like those things are planned and you knew when that was being planned that that mm -hmm. was going to be on the date of the right it was like stina said this was not a surprise mm -mm. Mm -mm. He, he could have definitely moved that but he mm -hmm. didn't and India for sure knew why, and I don't know. Maybe she just didn't want him to go to that dinner. She didn't seem to upset that upset he wasn't going he to the dinner. Yeah, mm -mm. She was just because like... he wasn't real. Like they weren't. Mm -hmm. She didn't have romantic feelings for him. I don't know that she really wanted him to show up, except that she knew that her father Bronson would ask, "Hey, right, where's your man at?" Right, because um, I am, I picture Bronson as a, a traditional black father. Mm -hmm. He's about to turn his company over to his daughter, and he wants right. her, you know, set up society wise. Um, but you know, that's probably also why he was pressuring Tony to, you know, you you need to go ahead and make the moves you need to make. And Tony was like, you know what, I don't wanna. <laughs> but you know what? In my mind, Tony's not even that fine. Like, he's just kind of right. there. Right, right. And he's, like, got all the trappings. Mm -hmm. but he like, he looks, even... he looks good, but he's so smarmy. Uh, and I don't even know and, if he looks yeah, good. He's just not. I mean, on the surface. On the surface. You can look at a I picture and be like, oh, okay. No. You know, I mean, India That's wouldn't be with. That's not the picture I'm building in, in my head. India wouldn't be with an ugly man. She okay. certainly wouldn't be with an ugly man. But he's not. His personality makes him ugly. His motivations right, right. make him unattractive and, and not he's someone scraggly. you he's would desire to be with. Yeah, and... yeah, and like not. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm. I just didn't. I didn't want the audience to have any bad feelings about wishing that she would toss him aside. Listen. And I don't think they do. I don't think they do. That situation. Usually I can sense or see things coming. I did, did it not. come out the blue? <laughs> it came. I was like, Good. I mean, looking back Good. on it, when you think about it, it's like, oh, okay. But at the time, mm -hmm. it just, I yes. felt like I, it happened to me. I was like, <laughs> this motherfucker right here. What? Right. What? Yeah, you see it in hindsight. Right. But yeah. But at that point, mm -hmm. I was just like, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, when you get so mad that all you can say is, oh, okay. Okay. You sent me the DM and you said you had to put it down. I did. I did, girl. I did. I, I was, was like, like, oh, okay. Okay. That's all I kept saying was, okay. Oh, all right. Oh, all right. That, okay. That, that's, that's what we're okay. doing? Okay. Okay. And then he did like this quick little glib at her when she's about to walk out of his office. And I was like. For real. Like, okay, so... Get out of his office right now, sis, before you throw something. Walk out. <laughs> and I wrote it. Real. And I wrote it. <laughs> and I was like, now what could he say to her that she would just be fuming? And uh, mm. that whole, like, this has been happening for a long time thing. <laughs> when he insulted her prowess... Oh, and then she threw it back. I had such a good time with that scene. Girl, I, I had such done a good more time with that scene. Throw it back verbally. Ooh, I would have. There would have been shit flying in that office. Found some things to throw, bro. Are you serious? Chairs. Because we can go down the list. We can go down the list. Mm hmm. Okay. I can't wait for you guys to read it. When you read it, send me a DM. Please send her a DM because I need y'all to give her all the grief. 
let's talk about Tony. <laughs> that scene. Oh my god. I, I like... always like I always want to talk about the characters that people don't like because <gasps> I want to know why you don't like them because sometimes I write them to not be liked like Tony, like Maxine and Brunch at Ruby's. I love when people hate Maxine because I wrote her that way. So, oh. yeah, let's talk about her because yeah, Maxine and I Tony, because they you know this together. Sometimes they are molded, like, not after real people, but after caricatures of people. About, mm -hmm. like, the public persona of somebody that you know, but you're like, you know, he kind of, he's kind of, mm -hmm. he kind of like that. Like, Girl, really? No? Like, he's the, he's the gossip that you hear about such and such famous person or such and such cultured person. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you know what? Behind closed doors, he's kind of, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? He'd be right. like clout chasing and and then i heard he was doing this and that you know on his girl and you're like oh girl like he right all of that that ball of gossip becomes tony <laughs> right like <laughs> his and, representative like, in my head i told you i understand you say india wouldn't date somebody who wasn't fine mm. but in my head he's, he's not really kinda, he's not even fine mm -hmm. he's just kind of there mm -hmm. she's dating him because he, he seems to have all the trappings but really mm -hmm. he's the kind yeah. of brother he doesn't even really have the kind of power that he thinks he has in his he job he he's doesn't. like you know he thinks he's bigger than he is but he's really just mm -hmm. a lawyer mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. not a whole lot of clout and mm -hmm. to me, the partners are just like laughing at him, like, "Yeah, he wants it mm -hmm. so bad, but he ain't he's the get it token, here. I'm sure." Yeah, I'm yeah, sure. yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're just like, he thinks that he's working his way up towards something, and they're like, he ain't doing nothing here. And yeah. then he's gonna get j mad because people are moving up above him, and he can't figure and, out why. And mm -hmm. he can't figure out why, and it's like because you're an asshole. That mm. could have something to do with it. <laughs> I mean, I'm possibly. Just they never think that that's the reason. They never I mean, think that's the reason. I mean, particularly I mean. later in the book when he really tries to throw his weight around, and Malika's like, "Bro, go sit down somewhere." Like talking about, oh, I got something on you, and and these and these. You sure you're you didn't get that idea for the game from somewhere? Like, get the f what? You're really pulling shit out the air right now, aren't right. you? Right. Yeah, he really thought he really thought he was gonna scare somebody, but no. no. I'm so glad that he just faded away in the book that nothing, because I would have had to really come for your neck if if you... Tony popped up later. <sighs> I was waiting for it, DL. I was waiting I feel for it. Like, I, was like... I, I mean, I feel like if the book were longer, I could have invented something for him Probably. to do. But India already made her her had already made her point and had right. told him, Hey, here's the situation and I need you to be a big boy and just deal with it. And so I felt like at that, at that juncture, she had shoved him to the side mm -hmm. and he does kind of sort of show up he, he, like not in person, but you know, there's shades of Tony, I think, throughout the relationship. He definitely makes a ripple effect mm -hmm. that kind of stands in between Malik and India. Like, mm -hmm. he, he does his job, but he, as a person, doesn't show up again after about, like, the first three quarters of the book. So, yeah. we, we done. We done with I'm, him. She I'm put him glad. away. She I'm put glad. him away. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know. But he I, couldn't stay gone. I, I, it's <laughs> just like, I always think about scenarios, like, if it extended out. And I was like, you know, what if she had married this dude? They would what have if? ended up divorced because Just ugly, yeah. He would have been so jealous of her uh -huh. and her mm -hmm. success. He yeah. would have been the type of person to be like, well, you're just right. getting all this success because you're part, you know, Parker's daughter. Exactly. And exactly. Don't really have any exactly. talent. He and always just... treated her like she wasn't much of nothing. Right. She wasn't that smart and like yeah. you need to listen to me and all that. Yeah, he definitely would have been jealous and would have torn her down and yeah mm -hmm. i'm like bro you listen to you your career is stagnant i am now the mm -hmm. president and ceo of a company mm -hmm. and regardless of if it was my father's company i was groomed for this and i'm doing exactly. well in this exactly. and she let everybody in the boardroom know she let him know she, she let, let him know, know. Mm -hmm. she let him know i also feel like tony would have definitely ridden her coattails to the top that he would have been, you know, trying to 
really worm his way into all the the uh, connections and the and the, the high powered meetings. I need to be a part of that. I need to get in that. I need to be on your arm. Uh, you know, I make sure they say my name. Um, uh, that kind of thing, where Malik was the exact opposite. Like right. he didn't. He didn't uh-huh. even like. He just didn't even want to go to social events with her because he right. didn't want attention drawn away from her. Right. I, I want to be there to support you, but I right. don't want the attention on me. I want it right. on you. So that but not was Tony. The, Tony all the, up in there. No, like, Tony Nina, wanted what? all the attention. What? Yeah. What do yeah. you want? Nobody mm-hmm. wants to see you. Nobody cares about yeah, you. Yeah, I did def- so definitely want to draw a difference between the two, between mm-hmm. what she could have ended up with and the man that she was meant to be with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. And also saying like what it means to be with a man that supports you 100. percent If right. you're you can't be with a man that's going to be jealous of where you're going and what you're doing and the leaps that you make, you got to be with somebody that's standing right beside you. That's right. right. That's my woman. I support right. her. You know. Mm-hmm. You know. Big ups to her. You know. Right. I, I'm I'm proud. I I'm happy to see her getting right. on and moving up and doing her thing. Right. Um. You know. So. Yeah. Tony's ass. He's on the list mm. with Maxine. Just saying. On the Those list. two should get together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know Maxine, that it would work out. Cause Maxine, Maxine... D- no. Maxine don't put up with no... Yeah. yeah. So... Maxine does end up with who she is meant to be with. Because also, Joseph Glass ain't looking at none of that shiny veneer yeah he don't care nothing about her car he don't care right. nothing about her buckhead condo he mm-hmm. don't care nothing about her money her job her prestige he just cares about her like, all i care mm-hmm. about is you so you can put yeah. all that away mm-hmm. and come over here and be soft with me mm-hmm. take all that off and be mm-hmm. soft over here so yeah she yep. ended up with who she needed to be with yeah very true all right, so we started talking about her a little bit, so let's talk mm-hmm. about India. Now, she comes India. from this solid, well-heeled family, and yet she is not pretentious. Mm-hmm. And I like that, because usually in books where you have people who come from, you have black characters that come from well-off families, there's a pretentiousness that's almost nauseating. Mm-hmm. And there's that whole thing, like you know, like you said, where you must be with this certain type of person and have this type of mm-hmm. career. And, and you don't have that in this book with India and with her family. Let's, let's mm-hmm. talk about why you chose to do it that way. I think um, I like... I like writing wealth, but I don't like writing people born into wealth. I like writing wealth where people have really put in the work and, you know, Parker Industries or Parker, what did, what did I name it? Parker Enterprises yeah. didn't start off as a company that has all these conglomerates and hundreds of employees. And they started off as this little, you know, little corner kiosk store and it built and built and built and built. And built. And I think that India's idea of who she is and who she is bred to be and what she has achieved comes from her father making her work her way up. She used, she went from sweeping the floors at the first Parker location to CEO and mm-hmm. leading the board meeting. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, over years of having that experience of working from the bottom up instead of being born to sit at the top, Mm -hmm. it creates a different person. It creates a person that knows how the janitor feels about the job, that knows how the male person feels about the job, that knows Mm -hmm. how the marketing department feels about the job because Mm -hmm. she's worked at every level. Mm -hmm. Um, It really makes her more of an every man. And um, I wanted to bring some, like some, some personable, um, attributes to her like I didn't I didn't want her to be unreachable I didn't Mm -hmm. want her to be blue blood I didn't want her to be stodgy and stuck up like she's she's a regular person right you know and um I she's a regular person with a big job Mm -hmm. and she's nervous about it like any of us would be and she's Mm -hmm. you know she has to push through and you know even though she is at the top and you know her dad owns the company the senior staff of that company are like uh little girl what you doing you what you doing be over but, uh, there and be the face of this and let us run the show yeah we got this over here we don't we don't we don't need you and she's like right. um actually 
actually, because I think that that staff felt like she was born into that position mm-hmm. instead of having worked her way up into it, which is mm-hmm. she had to tell them, no, no, I am Parker Enterprises. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't follow the direction of this staff. I lead it. And if you exactly. have an issue with that, the door is over there. Leave your resignation right in See that box. Out. And we good. She's like, I've been training for this for three years. What the hell y'all right. think is going exactly. on right now? Exactly. So I think a lot of that, it's her upbringing, it's her father, it's her history with the company. It's it's all she's ever known. Mm-hmm. So I mm-hmm. didn't, I don't, I didn't think that I could put her in that, you know, that high and mighty looking down on the people position when mm-hmm. this has been her whole life. It's all, mm-hmm. it's all she's ever known. She was born to be, she was born to be where she's at, but she had to work her way up to get there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I I like that one scene between her and Quinn when she finally calls him in the office and she's got this project for him and they kind of settle the air, you know, the bad Mm -hmm. feelings between them. Mm -hmm. And you see that reference to her, you know, as a kid, always wanting the green Jolly Ranchers and that it used to be an endearing relationship. But Mm -hmm. he, as a man, as an older man, has a problem with seeing her go from being this little girl in his office to being yes his much boss. younger being his yeah. boss yeah mm-hmm. so i like mm-hmm. seeing that that whole thing i think quinn has a problem with women in power because he doesn't like stina either Mm-mm, he doesn't and was stina yeah. almost jumped off the table well, she jumped over the table <laughs> listen that scene that scene was was that scene was much more violent at first but my beta and I had a long conversation about it. She's like, you know, you got to be careful with Stina because Why? she is nuck if you buck. I'm and, saying. You know, she's like, but you know, she's got, she's, she's in the office. It's, it's a office setting. She's like, you gotta, you gotta be careful. Like she needs to let Quinn know that they can go if he wants. He can have hands we rated E for out. everybody. Uh- but also, she needs to have some composure about herself, because her best friend is the boss, and she can uh, she can also get kicked out. So right, right. I had to kind of i i really i really needed Quinn to hear Stina's. I need Quinn to hear the bass in Stina's voice. Right, right. When they had right. that little row in the conference room, but I also needed her to be respectful of India. Right at the head of the table. But, but what kind of man are you? Meet me outside. You you jumping at you jumping like a little bitch when Stina coming after you. What are you doing right now? I yes. was like, you little that punk. was fun. Punk. That was fun. He was a punk. He was Quinn a, punk, is like a, a punk. Like a sneed. Like a sn- like a snide sniveling. Yeah. yeah. I was with, like, with, like uh, greasy hair and like. Mm, Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Quinn. That's Quinn. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I was like, oh, Quinn's, Quinn's that dude where you, you do like that. He's like, like, bruh, I can't even respect you. If I was his <laughs> right. woman and right. he, somebody, d- and you'd go and jump. Because you know it it's an Atlanta-based company, so that staff right. is black. Right. Quinn might be one of the few white people on staff. So he, but, you know, Bronson is very cultured and well-mannered and fatherly so maybe he's used to he's used to bronson but uh india and stina are younger and faster i, I, I will not I, let's go bro <laughs> if we wasn't it. in this board meeting right Look. now <laughs> walk over <laughs> limp back that's all i'm saying pop you shut <laughs> Bruh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I had time, I probably would have played with that a little bit more. But Quinn, Quinn got another shot or two in later in the book at Bronson's yeah. birthday party. And I just had, I just had fun with him not liking women in power and not liking Stina. Like him and Stina just don't get along. I needed her to hit him at the party, though. I mean, just she dragged him away. And knock I, him over. I imagine that she kind of snatched his arm hard and like, you know, led him like a little child, but I'm just saying, like, I needed her to just box his ears just one good time. Push him off the balcony. Oops. Yeah. Yeah. You he know? was drunk. Yeah. Push him in the pool. I know they had a pool. Push him in the pool. 
<laughs> let his ass that sit there been for funny. a minute. I'm just saying. That would have been funny. That would have been funny. You should you should have had a pool scene and just pushed his just ass right push on him in, in there. The, shut up. <laughs> You know, I mean, really, like, as soon as he said what he said, she should have just grabbed, like, excuse me, just throw him in the pool. <laughs> you're right. Oh, Done. you're right. Done. Yep. You're right. Just saying. Don't like him. Don't like him. Maybe so, either. still on India, uh -huh. even though she's been groomed to take over the family company, she has her own identity. You know, she's more than qualified to lead this company, but she's... She has an identity outside of Parker Enterprises. Why was that important to show that? I think, you know, we need to see our characters as real people, like a 360 image. Mm -hmm. she, we don't just see her from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or 7.30 to 4. Mm -hmm. She also has a 4 a.m. to 7 a.m. life and a 4 p.m. to midnight life. And mm -hmm. we need to see all facets of her life you know mm -hmm. she we don't see her go to boot camp but right. she does go to boot camp mm -hmm. <laughs> she's mm -hmm. you know she's you know got her best friend you know um so we don't we don't see a whole lot of her life outside of um the office with you know the nature of this book is that it's so short you really only get like blasts mm -hmm. but i did want to make sure to paint her as a whole person so we get yeah. to see all of that you know all of that person that she is she is mm -hmm. very sentimental about music obviously mm -hmm. and um you know she is a deeply feeling person and she's confident in um what she thinks about people and how she feels about people and mm -hmm. when she sees something that she wants she goes for it mm -hmm. um so i feel like women 30 and above i guess when they read romance novels, they do read them for the heroes. And so I want to make sure to write a hero that is just delicious. Mm -hmm. But also for the heroines, because there are so many of us that are out here just doing our thing. Mm -hmm. um, making our moves, moving up in the world, and whether it's corporate or like out here in everyday life. And we like to see us reflected back. And we like yeah. to see our excellence yeah. reflected back at us. We like mm -hmm. to see black people doing the damn thing right. reflected right back at us. So mm -hmm. it's always important to me when I write a heroine, like even if I write one that is struggling to come into her own, like Yvonne from The Guy Next Door, Mm -hmm. she is still a whole person and you still see all of her excellence shine through. It's right, so, right. it's her personality. It's mm -hmm. the things she loves. It's the wine she drinks. It's the stuff she eats. It's the, her perfect perfume and the style of clothes that mm -hmm. she wears. Like I, I wanted her to be wearing a white peplum top in the board beating because I mm -hmm. feel like white is a color of power and the peplum just accentuates the hits. And it's right. just like, it's just a sharp <laughs> board meeting kind right. of look, you know? And I just, I just like in my mind, I just have, have her like strutting into that office and mm -hmm. that's so much more than what happens between seven and four that's right. her whole life it's her whole it's her whole being so that's mm -hmm. you know that's what I want to do when when I write a heroine yeah yeah absolutely okay Malik Malik mm. <sighs> <sighs> I mean <laughs> That scene where I'm like, which one? <laughs> at the door. Oh yes, yes. And yes. just the way you described him with like his boxers in his hand and his, his, mm -hmm. his sweatpants on, and he's got his kicks on, and like mm -hmm. no socks, and I was just like, mm -hmm. he's just mm. regular, regular, a regular dude. Mm -hmm. But fine as shit. And doesn't know that he's fine as shit. Does it? Which is which, very sexy. Very, very sexy. sexy. Yeah. And just that, you know, when they were sitting on the couch and he was like, I was summoned. And the way you said his, the mm -hmm. timbre of his voice. And the, mm -hmm. mm. You brought Tell me Tell our over readers here. about Malik. Ugh. So Malik Hines is... Like the hero of this story. And I really wanted this story to be about Malik. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes I write a book where it's centered around the heroine and her journey. But this book is really the hero's journey because Malik mm -hmm. has 
made great strides in his life, but he has mm -hmm. so much more work to do around mm -hmm. the area of opening himself up mm -hmm. and um, being open to love and trusting a person mm -hmm. and learning what it means to be in love with a person and having someone that wants to care for you, wants to carry you, wants to be your ride or die. Um, he, mm -hmm. Malik is, uh, I think they're like 35, 37-ish. He mm -hmm. and India met in college. They were resident advisors, so they would live on the floor and plan activities. And they became friends, and um, he just never liked anybody that India ever dated and just couldn't figure out why it bugged him so much. The dudes mm -hmm. that she would go out with, he'd be like, they whack, that dude whack, he's whack, he's whack. whack. He's whack. She's like, stop saying that. <laughs> right. <laughs> She's like, stop I it. am going to find you a know, man that you like. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it never happened. And nope. after they graduated, you start to see the difference between Malik and India. Like mm -hmm. when they graduated from college, India had a big soiree at the Ritz Carlton, a big black mm -hmm. tie affair. Mm -hmm. Malik had a pizza party at right. West End Pizza. Like right. it's such a different, a difference in, in lifestyles that wasn't apparent really until they graduated. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't something I think that made a big deal to Malik until they were dating and they were in love. And he was really seeing the difference between the two. Mm -hmm. He was trying to build a tech company, um, kind of, he was working full time for a healthcare company and building his tech company mm -hmm. and it was failing. Meanwhile, she's like, just Rise been named of director of vice president of operations mm -hmm. at Parker and mm -hmm. she just bought a condo and mm -hmm. drives a luxury vehicle and mm -hmm. he's just seeing her rise higher mm -hmm. and he feels like he's going lower and he is afraid that he's going to bring her down. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so at that point, he's like, I really love you. I love you. I love you. love you. And I love you enough to let you go mm -hmm. because struggle isn't love. Mm -hmm. I am struggling and I'm not at a place where I could be your equal and mm -hmm. I can't stand beside you and pretend like I understand everything that's going on in your life and everything good that's happening. And I feel like I can't be that person that's happy for you mm -hmm. and happy for these developments when I'm about to declare bankruptcy. Right. And he didn't tell her any of this because mm -hmm. he knew that she would want to come to his rescue and he didn't mm -hmm. want that. Right. So. Malik makes the Which decision to step away. Which I have a problem with. Yeah. You know, I know. People are going to be like, let her help you. Yeah. Let her help you. You know. But I also, we also say all the time. I, I know. It. Yeah. We also say all the time that struggle isn't love. Yeah. And you can't be in a downtrodden situation and expect a person to pick you back up and pay off all your bills and all that. He had a point, but so did India, mm -hmm. that we love each other and you know like you're it if you're it for me i am gonna be down for you if right you know if it if it's us that needs to put this back together then we both can put this back together and at that time um i don't think malik was in a position to understand that i think yeah. he he saw himself as comp not as competition for her affection but as a person that could be a distraction and yeah. something that could bring yeah. her down and he yeah. also didn't I think he didn't want to put her in a position where she would have to financially help him because that, yeah. pardon me, that would also put him in kind of bad luck. Sorry. <laughs> I've been drinking water and my stomach is like, we have things going on down here. Yeah. The way my, the way my stomach is set up, it's like a, it's like a sieve. And so it kind of. Hard to explain, hard to explain, but anyway, I promise I'm not being rude on purpose. Just I, I didn't my, even my stomach has it. a mind of its it own. It didn't register. It really didn't. It's okay. <laughs> my, my stomach has a mind of its own. So yeah, yeah. Malik, seven years later, though, I think mm -hmm. through rebuilding his company and writing his game, Galaxy Bros, mm -hmm. relationship with his dad taught him a lot about holding fast to the people that you love. Right. Don't let life pass you by. Mm -hmm. Don't have any regrets. Go back and get that girl. And so mm -hmm. now he feels like he's in a position where he won't drag her down and mm -hmm. he won't be a distraction and she won't have to rescue him. Mm -hmm. 
And so that's when he makes he makes that move. Malik is um, what I like to call a hashtag sexy geek. Mm-hmm. That's my new my new obsession right now <laughs> is sexy geek. And I wanted to like um, sometimes just like I get tired of writing a heroine that's like pining for a man for seven years. Mm-hmm. I get tired of writing a man who's fine for no reason. Right. He's just handsome, like mm-hmm. handsome and grouchy or handsome mm-hmm. and. I don't, I don't write too many, I don't write too many like golden retriever type mm-hmm, heroes. Mm-hmm. Like maybe, maybe, maybe the guy next door is kind of a golden retriever, like happy go lucky type mm-hmm. of dude. But even he was a little somber, a little calm, very reserved. But mm-hmm. Malik is very much a geek, mm-hmm. um, very much a nerd. He writes video games. He plays video games. He built a, a gaming studio and he is just all about like gaming nerd tech Uh geekery and Mm -hmm. i found that exciting um there's a guy on twitter that uh, i had started following that he has been like writing like computer programs since he was eight and i was like wow that's amazing Mm -hmm. and now he writes you know all these different you know programs that 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 are sought after and i was mm-hmm. like that that's the kind of energy that i want like someone mm-hmm. who is so into technology and like it 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 he doesn't feel a need to try to be cool he's mm-hmm. just living his best tech mm-hmm. geek life so mm-hmm. that's the energy i wanted to bring to malik um hope mm-hmm. i did a good job yeah, with it. You did. Yeah, you did. So. What kind of research did you do for that? Because, I mean, you're not a gamer that I know of. I am not. <laughs> <laughs> but yet, I, when you wrote this I book, I'm like, this sounds listen. like she knows. So what kind of research did you do for I him? watched. Um, so I uh, did some research into game developers of color, mm-hmm. joined their okay. newsletter, went through their website, read like a whole bunch of interviews that they had with game developers, mm-hmm. particularly game developers of color, because we're so underrepresented mm-hmm. in just about every field, mm-hmm. really, except for sports. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to, I wanted Malik to have the perspective of a gamer, mm-hmm. but not like a gamer trying to sell his game to Xbox, mm-hmm. not a gamer trying to sell his game to EA games. Mm-hmm. He, he wants it for himself. He mm-hmm. wants to be an indie game developer because just like indie authors, we mm-hmm. want to control our intellectual property mm-hmm. and we don't, we don't want to like ship it off to some company so they can rip it apart make all the characters Mm -hmm. white give it some happy music that yeah (laughs) yeah and like there's no there's no culture there's no soul there's no Mm -hmm. flavor there's no seasoning to it and Mm -hmm. malik wanted to um control all of the seasoning that went into his games so um i did a lot uh a lot of research through game developers of color and i just like i'm a documentary person I i'd be know. watching some documentaries chow <laughs> so when i found documentaries <laughs> on game developers uh-huh. um like ted talks and um a couple documentaries from indie game developers all the way through from writing the game through the game going live and trying to sell the game. That's how I learned about all the stages of game development. What's, you know, you, you, you write it and then you QA it and then you test it, then you fix all the bugs and then you QA mm-hmm. it, you test it and you fix all the bugs and this. Right, uh, right, uh, right. Uh, <laughs> and in addition to that, I also worked for a tech company. I worked for a software, um, a software company. We wrote, uh, we, we write the software that techs use to fill out their the field field report okay. manager, whatever. Okay. We, gotcha. we, I worked for Service Central, and um, that's that's all they do is they write the software that technicians use, mm-hmm. um, that companies use for their technicians to like, here's a service call, um, that, that kind of stuff. And so I sort of had that really back in my mind. I'm always drawing on that experience mm-hmm. um, of working for that company because the developers, developers are a different breed of people. Mm-hmm. They're like, I would walk into the room where my developers are working and they're just, they got their hoodies on and they're like, they're right. <laughs> so <laughs> what? <laughs> it's just all day. 
Like, I'm like, is this fun to you guys? Yeah, I'm almost done. <laughs> and like, um, I also work for a company that built a cloud-based oh. phone company. And so <laughs> I've been delayed. like working with tech people. <laughs> For those that are, if you're listening, you need to go watch on YouTube because... I forgot this is also audio, but yeah. Because the way she just was... Just they just, like, it just, they got their hoodies on, and they're just, it's fingers flying over the keyboard, and they only look up to check the monitor or to see who walked in the room. The lights are always off, because they don't like overhead lights. Lights right. are always off. Right, right, the coffee right, right. is always like sludge. Mm -hmm. There's always, like, the desk is always covered in, like, candy wrappers. Right, right, right. Like, chocolate and Skittles. Like, when I would do the, the office supply restock for the week, just candy. Mm -hmm. I need Snickers. Snickers. <laughs> I need Snickers. So I would buy, like, bags and bags of chocolate, and I just would have bowls of chocolate oh. all over the office. Chocolate, salt, coffee, soda, if you have those in a tech office, they right. love you and yeah. they will probably never leave you. Right, um, right, right, right. So I was drawing on all of that experience because it was a very happy time, right. really, for me. That's the job I had before I came to the um, Atlanta-based beverage giant. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, it's they're, they're just, they're, they're a different breed. And so mm -hmm. I wanted Malik also to be part of that different breed and not not pair her with some like with like some big brute right yeah. business owner right tech dude bro kind right. of guy like right 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 you know like <laughs> I, I just i didn't feel like she would really be attracted to that mm -hmm. type of dude she really needed somebody that was just way into the the technology, way into the the, the science, and she's known mm -hmm. Malik since they were in college. She's always right. known this about Malik, and mm -hmm. she always found it sexy. So right. it was not really any surprise to her that she found all of that attractive. So right, right. But that fire what I was stick about, idea, I mean, isn't I, it? Is that something like that you just dreamed up, or is that something that no, exists? actually, um, I'm. I mean, I'm sure it exists. But I had brunch with um, one of my good author friends, Nikki Blair, mm -hmm. and I was kind of struggling with the book and didn't, I'm like, I don't know what to do with this. Like, here's my situation. It's like, oh, I'm a gamer. So also had a good conversation with Nikki about right. gaming. And I was like, okay, here's the situation. Uh -huh. I want to write it so that he has this great invention that he has the possibility to sell. Mm -hmm. And so we just kind of started like talking it out and tossing ideas out and back and forth. What if he does this? Oh, but then there's this problem. What if he does that? Okay, mm -hmm. that could work. And she said, what if he develops a proprietary game stick that all of his games go on, then you can take it anywhere. She's like, that's like, that's, that's like a, that's like a, I'm sure it exists, but that's like a thing that people could sell because then he could license that and that would mean big money right. and if he could sell or license that stick to gaming companies or gaming platforms that would give him some security and make him feel like he had a leg to stand on and like mm -hmm. he had some kind of future and that he could stand on the same level as India like he wouldn't he would no longer feel like he was dragging her down or mm -hmm. he was riding her coattails. Like once mm -hmm. they got the patent for that stick, then he kind of felt like he could really he could really compete for her and he could mm -hmm. play mm -hmm. in that field. Mm -hmm. Whereas before he didn't feel like he could be good enough, important enough. Right. right. Sort of along right. that vein. So Nikki Blair um, actually really helped me a lot in kind of developing that end of it because I am not a gamer. <laughs> um, so she explained, you know, a whole lot to me and I have, I have a beta whose son is a gamer. And so mm -hmm. like, I would like, ask your son, what's a good chair for a uh -huh. gamer to have? <laughs> ask your son, what are great headphones for a gamer right, to have? Right, right, right. Ask your son, like, <laughs> all this stuff. And then when she beta read it, she mm -hmm. kind of went through a couple ideas and he was like, no, 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 it has to be this. It has to be uh -huh. this. Tell her it uh -huh. has to be this. So, um, <laughs> It takes a village. <laughs> My village right, right, obviously right. knows a lot about games because right. I haven't played a game since like Super Nintendo, like Super Mario Brothers. Uh -huh, so uh -huh, I hear the uh -huh. I hear the song in my head. Um, <laughs> right. That will be the last game I played, unless you 
account like Township on oh. my on my <laughs> iPhone. I play Township every day, but like right. you know, some solitaire here and there. But I am right, right, I am right. in no means a gamer, so right. got lots of research from YouTube. Um, mm-hmm. Lots of like Netflix and Hulu documentaries, right? Websites and people, 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 people were really the best, really the best resources because mm. it's like I think I said this the other night on Twitter. Like it'll be something like silly and n- innocuous that you don't research, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but it'll come out in your reviews that you didn't research that because it, it'll just right. be like you know like the most regular thing and like mm-hmm. doesn't the author know that. X and Y, like obviously right. she did right. it. Like right. I right. have to research things to the nth degree, <laughs> right. so that I sound like I know what I'm talking about, and then mm-hmm. distill it down to where I'm not preaching at you about gaming, but also right. you know, like making it interesting because you know your average reader doesn't need to know every facet of how a game comes to market, but that's what Malik is doing. He's bringing a game to market. And so I have to take you along that journey. Right. And all I'm saying is gamers out there, if you read this book and you get this idea and you use, use it and you like make credit me money. No, forget the credit. You need to cut my girl some royalties. That's all I'm (laughs) saying. Cause it's a really good idea. It is. I love the idea of like a, of a black a game that's for black people featuring black characters with mm-hmm. black music in it, and even like when when India says, "Did that character just say, just bet? say bet?" Yeah, I yeah. I cracked yeah. up. I was yeah. like, "Yeah." <laughs> He's like, "Bet," and I saw it in my bet. head, like him just go off and do his little thing, right? You know, <laughs> right? So you you ask and you choose your adventure, right? What right. game you want to play, and the character says. Bet. And bet. I was like, I would love that. Yeah. I would love that. Like, does Absolutely. that game exist? I would right. love that. I need it to yeah. exist. We need it. We need I'm it. I'm just saying. <laughs> so y'all need to cut her some royalties. The fire stick and the black worlds. All of that. Hit me up. Hit me, me and Nikki. We can work it out. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. Just saying. All right. So I want to switch a little bit to the writing side. All now. right. So all right. This is the first book you put out since the pandemic, or was it the Yes. Neverlist? Okay. So no, so well, I did A Thin Line and Neverlist in 2020. Okay. And then okay. not another book since. Right, right. So this is the first book. So talk to uh-huh. me about what was going on creatively, the burnout, the all that. What was happening there? So <clears throat> I've talked about this a few times, but I 2020 was like like I'm a person that feels things and I worry about things I don't need to worry about, but Mm -hmm. they're tangentially connected to things I have to worry about. And so I'm just worried about everything. Mm -hmm. Um, 2020 was really rough for me. And Mm -hmm. my boss told me, you got to stop looking at COVID numbers every day. Like I was Mm -hmm. watching Andrew Cuomo's press conference every day to figure out what was happening on New York because it was that mm. was the worst place mm-hmm. and if anything was going to change it was going to change at New York first and so I would mm-hmm. go pull the numbers every day and I'm looking it down and I'm just like I'm really worried and like you know in my job none of my salespeople were out in the field mm-hmm. um, they weren't going to restaurants and so I didn't have much to do mm-hmm. um, you know we were still you know meeting every week and trying to keep the business going but at that time, I, I worked on a fast food team and restaurants were closed. They were only running drive through mm-hmm. um, Restaurant owners weren't all that worried because their labor costs were way down because they're mm-hmm. only running drive through and the grills. Right. Right. Um, so right. my boss is like, you know, don't worry about them. They're millionaires. They fly private planes to their meetings mm-hmm. at headquarters. Don't don't worry about them. They'll mm-hmm. be fine. You've mm-hmm. got to pull yourself back from this. And so... Mm-hmm. I I had to stop watching the news. I Mm -hmm. had to cut off all of the news outlets on Twitter. I just, I Mm -hmm. can't focus on this. And I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get busy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get busy because I have a a lot of time. Mm -hmm. I had Mm -hmm. a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So um, I released an audio book. I got Mm -hmm. uh, contracted Sherelle to record the audio book for the guy next door. Mm -hmm. Was that, that was, uh, yes, we did the audio book for the guy next door. I had already started um, rewriting A Thin Line because I had written it, published it, pulled mm-hmm. it, and then mm-hmm. I was going to rewrite it. I had already started rewriting that in like 2019, mm-hmm. but the pandemic 
gave me time to like really dig into it. Mm -hmm. I released that in April and then I was like, I need something else to do. <laughs> <laughs> I need to be busy. I need to get busy. And so right, I right. jumped right into the never list, mm -hmm. I think around May or so. And I thought I was going to release it in the summer, but it just got bigger and bigger and bigger mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and released that in September. And then I was like, tired. <laughs> I was just exhausted because there's go, go, go. It's like write the book and do the cover and do mm -hmm. the promo. And, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you've mm -hmm. done it yourself. All the, the author admin, I could spend mm -hmm. 40 hours a week on admin. Mm -hmm. All you got to write your description and put it mm -hmm. up everywhere, post your links and put your links here and all, I mean, so much stuff. I was just tired mm -hmm. at the same time my in October my father was diagnosed with prostate cancer mm. in December my roommate started treatment for breast cancer oh god so I I hit a wall mm. I hit a wall mm -hmm. and then that December I learned that my job was going to be impacted by a restructure at mm -hmm. beverage giant so I just I just hit a wall I just mm -hmm. could not at that point find a spare part of my brain mm -hmm. that could be creative that could that could that could think that could think positive happy thoughts and mm -hmm. romantic relationships and right. like i'd like i'm not a journaler so i like a, i mean of course i wasn't even journaling like i hate i hate journaling god i hate journaling <laughs> I tried it actually in January 2021. I tried it for like a month and I was like, oh, this is so miserable. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh my God. I'm so boring. Um, and I, I kind of, I gave up after a month because I just, I'm not, I'm not, that's a, not, I'm not, that's a not you. It's not, it's not my back. So I just, I hit a wall and then I just, so many things were going on that I was worried about that I didn't have the time or the brain power or the bandwidth mm -hmm. to create. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't create happiness and joy for other people when my mm -hmm. real world is falling apart. Mm -hmm. So I needed first to get to a place where I was sturdy. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the businesses started to come back in 2021 um, restaurants started opening. So my salespeople were back out in the field. Mm -hmm. Um, my roommate went through treatment for breast cancer, chemo, radiation, and then she, um, had to have a mastectomy. Mm -hmm. Um, that took us all the way through summer. I got a new job. The new job mm -hmm. is fun, but a lot, mm -hmm. a lot, mm -hmm. it's <laughs> a lot. Like I was busier than I have ever been right. doing things I have never done before, mm -hmm. learning mm -hmm. a ton of stuff, meeting new people. And so just busy, busy, busy. Right. And I just wasn't really thinking about writing. Like I am a part time author. Mm -hmm. I work mm -hmm. a full plus time job. Like sometimes mm -hmm. I even travel for work. Like it's just so much. And like, I just could not, I couldn't wrap my brain around writing. Um, mm -hmm. I did want to do um, a holiday short in 2021 but i made the mistake of making an appointment to have my last wisdom tooth removed over um, that christmas break we usually stop working around december 15th mm -hmm. um, everybody at the company except for finance because i have to close the year we're mm -hmm. pretty much out of there so mm -hmm. um i take the last two weeks of the year off Whew, praise the lord <laughs> and um so <laughs> On the first day of Christmas vacation, I have my wisdom tooth taken out. So I am on pain pills. And I was like, you know what? It's going to be really easy to write because I'll be on pain pills. <laughs> and I forgot that pain pills make me sleepy. Mm -hmm. So all mm -hmm. I wanted to do was sleep. Right. So um, right. that short did not happen because I was sleeping. <laughs> And then here we come up to 2022. And mm -hmm. I'm like, you have not published since 2020. You've got to get something out, write something, write anything, mm -hmm. write something. And mm -hmm. then I put so much pressure on myself to write that I can't write. I can't, mm -hmm. like, I can't think of a story. Like I start several things, but nothing sounds good and I'm rusty yeah. and I'm tired and I'm, yeah. I'm like, I'm reading, I'm reading a ton. I read like 200 and some books in 2020. Mm -hmm. I had to stay busy. Right. I read like a hundred and some books in 2021. 
I read 150 in 2022. So I be reading. Doing that, girl. I take my hat off to you. I do. I don't do anything else. I tell people I I do not have a life outside of writing books, reading books, and watching documentaries. That's all I be doing. That's all. That's. I don't have a husband. I don't have children. My friends are inside the computer. Still, (laughs) I don't leave my house. I just be reading. I just be reading, and they're also kind of short. Like romances are short. It's not. I'm not reading Dostoevsky. Uh, right. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not reading David Blight's Frederick Douglass, <laughs> except for Kay. Uh, poor Kay. Wait, Kay wait Kay's not. Finish? Kay's not reading him either. Wait, Kay's not reading him either. Um, we love you, Kay. We, we love you, Kay. She threw the shade first, though. I. Don't, I did. I did. Don't don't did. don't blame it on me. Don't blame it on I me. I did. I did. Come come beat me up, come or invite me to her. South Carolina. I will take come my licking for her come for her <laughs> yeah so i mean i'm not i'm not reading you know i ain't reading nothing with raymond or gracia i'm not reading like <laughs> deep literary fiction i'm not reading tony morrison out here i'm reading romances and they're relatively right. short two three hundred pages it don't take right. much it, right. it don't take much to get through it and, and i right, read right. fast i'm a fast reader so okay. um okay. i just i just i first i was like burnt out because pandemic and then burnt out because so much going on and then I'm like I'm I'm blocked and burnt because I feel like I've lost the juice Mm -hmm. like I don't have I don't have that same verve that I used to have I I, is my voice still here do I still know how to write like I just would write something and be like eh this is dumb is law and order on (laughs) I'm going to watch all of Rizzoli and Isles while I think about this plot point here. Yes, that's a good plan. That's a good plan. I need to watch all 12 seasons of Bones because I would rather do that than write. So I just, but like 2022 was like, if I didn't publish that year, Mm-hmm. I could see myself letting it go for another a whole other year. Like I wouldn't write anything at all in 2023. Mm-hmm. Like I think like there's there's so much talk in burnout that's give yourself a break. Mm-hmm. Give yourself some grace. Mm-hmm. Just take it easy on yourself and I am really the type of person that needs to tell myself get off your, ass your up. butt. <laughs> sit at that table write something it probably sucks write it anyway right. because right. what you can do later is you can edit it so that it doesn't suck right. the first iteration of this book when i finished it mm-hmm. like i finished it during NaNoWriMo i never honestly i never would have finished it if it wasn't for NaNoWriMo i have a writing group that we get together um once a quarter and mm-hmm. we decided uh that we were going to do NaNoWriMo so we set up mm-hmm. a little spreadsheet and mm-hmm. everybody writes every day and we report our numbers and it's all uh-huh. jolly good and Stephanie Norris is in our group and you know Stephanie Norris be writing in her sleep and so she hit 50,000 words relatively quickly and I'm like um (laughs) the (laughs) is Rizzoli and Isles on right now (laughs) but because it was NaNoWriMo I was like I need to write I need to I need to shove out 50,000 words just write the words just write them it probably sucks fix it later just write the words and so right, right. i just wrote the words the first iteration of this book was horrible mm-hmm. it was absolutely awful <laughs> terrible so i finished it and then i put it away and but i didn't have a lot of time because i i still wanted to publish it mm-hmm. in 2022 mm-hmm. so fastest turnaround ever i edited it and edited it. thank god i was off work mm-hmm reserved this time specifically to edit this book mm-hmm. just edit and rewrote and edit and rewrote and i messaged my beta and i said i got something coming in hot right 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 i need to publish it december 31st are you going to be available to beta she's like send it send mm-hmm. it on i'm mm-hmm. in and so edit 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 rewrite edit and i was like okay i think i think it's good so i sent it to her and she sent me a message and she was like, um, we need to talk. And I was like, no, we don't need to talk. <laughs> so, and this is like, 
December 27th, maybe. So I don't have a ton oh, of time. Oh, God, right. So we did right. have a really, really, really good conversation about some things that need to be cut and some things mm -hmm. that weren't good. Mm -hmm. um, consistencies and, you know, the thing between Quinn and Stina. Let's shape that up. Let's firm that up. Like, I feel like I have a, such a great partner with my beta that she can see where I want to go and she helps me get there mm -hmm. and she isn't reacting to it as it is. She is reacting to it as how it's meant to be and right. showing me the gap. Like, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. feel like mm -hmm. you want to be here, um, but it's this. So mm -hmm. you should do this. You should move this to here. You should cut this because it doesn't. Mm -hmm. You've already said this four times. It doesn't make mm -hmm. any difference. This scene here is meaningless. I don't understand what this word means. <laughs> I don't like how she says this over here. Like, she is not right. cutting and she's not brutal, but she is right. forthright and honest. And that mm -hmm. is what I needed in right. my darkest hour, in my right. ninth hour right. Right. before. Right. I don't like, I don't need someone to like pussyfoot around like, it's good, uh -huh. but like, I don't. I'm like, I've been publishing since 2015. I'm on book 11. I know what a good book sounds like. If I send it to you, I don't think it's crappy, but I know it needs work. Give it to me. Mm -hmm. Right. Give me the words. Tell mm -hmm. me what you see as a reader, because maybe, mm -hmm. maybe I don't see it and I don't have a lot of time for someone to try to be nice about it. And she mm -hmm. wasn't mean about it, but I mm -hmm. like, I don't, I don't want brutality. But I don't correctness. need, yeah, bring it correct. But I don't need like gentleness. Like I would mm -hmm. rather you hurt my feelings pre-publication right. Right. than for me to see something in a review that I could have fixed before I released the book. So, right, right, right. Yeah. Right. So I forgot what question I was answering, but that is how we <laughs> got a book on December 31st. 2022 because otherwise i mean i was like well i guess i could hold it and release it in january but then you know i am not the kind of person that can wait mm -hmm. and like eminem says i bully myself to get myself to do the things i need to do mm -hmm. i i took that on i am a complete bully about mm -hmm. nope you said December, so December 31st so right. it might yeah. not be perfect it's not the pinnacle of literary greatness or anything mm -hmm. out here but I'm, I'm not trying to be tony morrison i'm just trying to be me right, and right. it's just a fun book that i wanted to put out there because i needed to publish something in 2022 right. right 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 so that's how we got through the 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 writer's block the creative yeah thing. just push yeah 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 so then talk to us about this this story that you told on your on your podcast about the whole thing with vellum and reedsy oh my god <laughs> oh this was a nightmare this is a nightmare so vellum is professional i'm using air quotes book publishing software mm -hmm. it is mac only um i've been using it since 2016 and if you like how my books look it's all because of vellum because mm -hmm. previously typeset and formatting of a book would take hours just mm. meticulous tedious hours and mm. it was ugly and it still ended up ugly and i wasn't paying somebody to format my book i used mm -hmm. to do all that all that myself and take hours of vellum took hours of work and it spit out a pretty book mm -hmm. so i've got the book done and the beta is making her last turn for like typos and whatnot and I'm like, well, I'm just going to go ahead and throw it into vellum, get my cover all set, do, you know, the typeset, get my styles and everything all set up. And mm -hmm. I can't log in to my computer. And I'm like, okay, this is weird because I know that's my password. I haven't mm -hmm. changed my passwords. It's easy for me to remember. Right. I can't log in to my computer. And... um. Hours and hours and hours later, like I am on the line with Apple tech support and they're like, right. ma'am, I don't, we've tried I to reset know. the password. <laughs> I don't know what the issue is. The only thing we can do is like wipe it and it'll be just like a brand new computer. And I was like, do it, uh -huh. do it because all my stuff's in the cloud. I like, right, I, right, all right. my stuff is saved up 
in the cloud. I wasn't really too worried about any of that. I save mm -hmm. stuff at Google Drive. I use mm -hmm. Dabble Writer, which is in the cloud. I use Google Docs, which is in the cloud. Emails mm -hmm. in the cloud. Mm -hmm. I don't have stuff saved to my machine anymore. Mm -hmm. I like, do it. I'm not worried about it. So we do it. Brand new machine, empty. Mm -hmm. So I go to download Vellum again, and they need your license key. Okay, I've got that. It's in my email, which is in the cloud. Mm -hmm. So I pull up my license key, <laughs> but it's tied to an old email from my old blog, the Sweet Escape blog that I had when I first started writing fan fiction. Mm -hmm. And I don't have that blog anymore. I don't have that email anymore. So wow. I can't reset the license key to oh, re-download wow. Vellum. And wow. I can't, my book's going to be ugly if I can't use Vellum. So right. now I'm, I guess, you know, I really could have reached, reached out to somebody that I know has Vellum and asked them to format it, but mm -hmm. I'm not that kind of person. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't be asking for help. <laughs> Earlier today, my roommate was yelling at me because um, I ordered a stand up desk and those boxes are heavy. It came in two boxes and I was dragging them through the garage. Yeah. She's like, why don't you ask IB, her fiance lives here, she's like, why don't you ask IB to help you? And I was like, um, is he here? Because, <laughs> like, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a single woman. I'm like, I'm, I am woman, hear me roar. I can do right, this. Right. So I was literally just going to drag it upstairs by, by myself. Right. Whatever. So I'd be like, I don't, I don't be asking people for help. I'm going to figure out how to solve this problem. So I get online and I always know I can go to draft a digital and use their typeset formatter, but I put my book in there and I, I hate it. I just, it's mm -hmm. not right. I don't like it. So mm -hmm. just looking through, I, I am a member of a couple of admin forums. So I pop into the admin forums like, Hey, what can I use? I can't get a develop. They're like, Oh, try Reedsy. So mm -hmm. Reedsy is, um, it's sort of like, um, it's a cross between draft to digital if you've ever used it, which is like a super basic you 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 plug your thing in and it it, it just it sets it up just mm -hmm. book. Mm -hmm. It's between <laughs> that and vellum, which is like pretty book. <laughs> pretty, pretty filly, frilly book. So Reedsy is like right in between these two. And it worked in a pinch, so it's mm -hmm. it's cloud based. I plugged my book in. Um, went through all my, you know, setting up. I didn't, I didn't like a couple of things that were like rigid, that you can't change this. You can't move that. Like the things I couldn't move around, like stuff I'm used to having control over. Like I'm an mm -hmm. indie author because I like control and Vellum mm -hmm. gives me complete control and mm -hmm. Reedsy didn't want to give me control over a few things. Um, mm -hmm. but it did it in a pinch in, mm -hmm. in, it let me do my cover all the dedication, all my chapters, the afterword about the author, all of that mm -hmm, stayed, mm -hmm. you know, the same. It did it in a pinch, but on mm -hmm. January 1, well, so I did write to Vellum and I said, hey, I need to reset my license, um, but it's tied to an old email address. Well, Vellum's out of the office until January 4th, 2023. And so that's why I couldn't reset right. the license key. Yeah. Yes. And so mm -hmm. that's why I was stuck working with Reedsy, mm -hmm. which um, it worked fine. It worked in a pinch. But as soon as soon as I could log into Vellum, mm -hmm. I uploaded that book into Vellum, mm -hmm. made all my pretty changes, moved stuff around and republished it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So if you want the pretty book version, let me know. I will <laughs> I will send you a copy of it because, you know, I'm sensitive sensitive about my stuff. I want it to look, you know, I want it to look good. I want it to look right. a certain way. And right, I'm used right. to how it looks when it comes out with vellum. But that right. was an absolute nightmare. And that was like the day before. So like the 29th, mm -hmm. maybe because mm -hmm. I wanted to upload it on the 30th. <clears throat> that way, Amazon would have time to dink around and publish it. Mm -hmm. um, so that was like the 29th mm -hmm. that I was trying to upload it and get everything all nice get my final changes back from my beta, mm -hmm. do a, a one last run through. And then like on the 30th, I released that book on my website for anybody mm -hmm. who wanted it early. And then on the 31st, it would be available to all the retail stores. So right, right, right. that, I mean, that was an ordeal <laughs> and it was kind of scary because I couldn't get in like 
all my writing stuff is on mm -hmm. that laptop. Like, mm -hmm. I can't publish a book from my work laptop. Right, right, right. I mean, I could, but mm -hmm. not really. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. like all my all my all my stuff is on that laptop, and I have right. no idea what happened. We think it was an issue between um, upgrading the OS, like something didn't kick, mm -hmm. and then it locked me out of it. Wow! <laughs> so we had to like completely like whatever they call it, reformat it. Yeah, yeah. Reset yeah. the password to something else I can remember. Um, but yeah, now Vellum is working. Yay. I did reset the license, and so the next book that I write, <laughs> I, w I will be able to, like, do it, you know, do it the regular way. I will, right. we'll keep Breezy in the cut. <laughs> we'll keep it <laughs> in the pocket, as you will, but I right, don't, right, I don't right. plan on, I don't plan on using it again. It but is, for you know, those of us who are not Apple is people, free. Vellum is yeah. not a choice for us. No. Yeah, I mean, you can do Mac and Cloud, um, but I think that's a, that's kind of a hassle. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also Atticus, which aims to be a Vellum competitor for Windows people. Okay. Um, it came out very recently, maybe 2021-ish, and they've been steadily making improvements. Um, mm -hmm. I'm hearing people are very happy with Atticus, so um, mm -hmm. that could also be a choice for people who are... Um, Windows PC based who want something okay. like a professional um, book publishing software. So, um, okay. Okay. yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Reads, I mean, Readsy will also work. It works on PC and mm -hmm. it's cloud based. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, every author has things that they wish people would ask about in interviews. Is there one thing that no one has ever asked you in an interview that you'd like mm. your readers to know about? That's a very good question. I try. <laughs> like, I feel like the conversation we just had about Vellum and like all the intricacies of what mm -hmm. it is to be an independent author, like no one mm -hmm. ever asks those questions. And mm -hmm. like, that's all the stuff that like, that's the nitty gritty that I really like talking about. Um, mm -hmm. I love like the ins and outs of indie publishing, the ins and outs of book reading. Mm -hmm. um, I always feel like the focus is always on the character, it's on the books, how did you write this, when did you write this, how did you feel when you wrote mm -hmm. this book, and mm -hmm. it's not really on, like, the books I'm reading, the books mm -hmm. I'm interested in, all the, like, the 99 podcasts I listened to right. yesterday, <laughs> and the 44 um, documentaries I watched last week, like, wow. uh, like, all of those things, I'm exaggerating, of course, but it's... <laughs> Probably not by much, DL. I don't know how it's your brain lot. stays in your head. I know. I watch With a couple all. a night. A couple a night. Um, well, like, all of those things make me who I am as a person. It feeds mm -hmm. that stuff into my brain, and that's where the story ideas come from. And that's mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. I say, like, I don't understand how authors can write the same book over and over. There are so many ideas. Like, there are, there are, no, there are no new plots. There are right. no new tropes, mm -hmm. but you can have four different people take the same plot or the same trope and write mm -hmm. a totally different, different book. Story. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that is what is like, that's magic to me. That's mm -hmm. amazing to me. Like that is the beauty of books and art and filmmaking and documentary and music mm -hmm. to me. Like mm -hmm. we all get the same eight counts, mm -hmm. but Pharrell does it different than other person I can't think of over here, another musician. <laughs> yeah. It's right. the same eight count, but mm -hmm. they all apply rhythm and melody and mm -hmm. harmony and soul and beat mm -hmm. and words to make different music. It's the same eight right. counts. Right. Right. You know, right. like right. we right. all use 26 letters on this keyboard and mm -hmm. we all write, there's millions of books out there. Like, yeah. That blows my mind. That's fascinating. Yeah. And so yeah. I'm always yeah. like, you know, yeah, I'm going to watch four documentaries on Alzheimer's tonight, but they're all going to tell a different story. Right, right. <laughs> this is why people don't ask me these questions, Audrey, because now I'm going to talk for a half hour about Alzheimer's documentaries. You wanted to hear that. I know you did. What did I watch last night? I watched. Oh, my goodness. 
something. I know, I know I posted it, but now I can't remember it. Oh, um, American Pain. Okay. I've been really getting into like, um, uh, documentaries about the, uh, uh, Opioids, opioids and uh, all Isn't of that, that stuff. Isn't that the one and, like, that they did the all... Netflix movie on, American Pain? Isn't that... No, that was uh, whoo, that was Empire of Pain. Oh, Empire of Pain. Okay. Which was a very good book. A very good book. Um, okay. I listened to it in audio. It was fantastic. And then the, the Hulu um, mm-hmm. limited series right. was also very good. Love yeah, Michael Keaton really in that. Yeah. It was fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know people that didn't like it. I am not one of those people. Um, like Empire it. of Pain was really good. So, um, but like, you know, books create stories in my head and then those stories get spit out into the books that I want to write. Those are the stories that live up there and they tell mm-hmm. themselves to me until they get mm-hmm. so loud that I can't stand it and I have mm-hmm. to write it down. And so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. sometimes like authors don't get to talk about like the stuff that they do when they're, when they're not writing, when they're mm-hmm. not, you know creating worlds and bringing entertainment to your faces and to right. your ears. Um, that's all stuff I'm always willing to talk about. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> yes. And food. Nobody asks me about food. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, like, I feel like, um, I feel like I'm very approachable and wide open. And um, I don't know that there's really any question out there that hasn't been asked. I don't know. Right. Well, I know you're powered by Skittles. Yes, I have a bag of Skittles. <laughs> oh, you don't. It's across you the room. Really I do. <laughs> it's across the room. I have a bag of Skittles because, you know, after this is over, I'm going to shut down the work side of my bedroom right, right. and head over to the personal side of my bedroom. And I'm uh-huh. going to watch documentaries and eat Skittles and cheese. No gummy bears? I don't have any gummy bears this time. Because uh, I can only, I'm, I'm only letting myself do one sugar at a time. Okay. And I decided I'm just going to do Skittles. The gummy bears are really sweet to me. Mm-hmm. Like, um, mm-hmm. And Skittles aren't, D.L.? Come on Skittles now. Skittles are, it's a different kind of sugar. Like, the gummy bears are overly, like, sometimes there's, they're sweet and then there's sweet. <laughs> gummy bears are sweet. It's real, it's way up there on the sweet right. register. Right. And I can't, my body can't handle that so Mm -hmm. i just stick to skittles um and uh i just am trying to do one sugar right now because i have had some i lost a lot of weight um a Mm -hmm. while back and i've had a little bit of regain and i'm just trying to stop that train because right we are not going through the whole weight loss thing again so i'm just trying to enjoy myself but also um be like like be for real you don't need gummy bears and skittles but i only Um, have one sugar because the other sugar was sold out at walgreens so that's mm. that's why i only have a bag of skittles (laughs) there you have it ladies and gentlemen the important things about dl I'm so ridiculous. <laughs> oh, wait. And I bought this shirt to wear, and you can't even see it. No, because you're... It, it says I'm, I'm thinking... thinking oh, I'm, I'm, I'm I think I bought close. Edgar that same shirt. Did you? Yeah. See, Ed and I, Ed and I are, are, we're soul relatives. Y'all are so much alike. It's ridiculous. I cannot... <laughs> Because he's very nerdy, techie too, right? He's like he's a very computer much dude. so. Yeah, very yeah, yeah. much so. Yeah. See, that's why, gamer, like, dude, that's why you like. That's why you like Malik. You know, probably. Yeah. What did you think of Malik's brother? Because I had a lot of fun writing him. You know, Brandon is that dude. Like he's that guy that's just like that cool brother. He's a you know, yeah, punk little brother. Yeah. Little punk little brother. But I don't know. I feel like he's got that little side because he was like, dude, let me know and I'll rock him. And I'm like, right. oh, for real? Brandon, that's Brandon what can be trouble. 
Brandon can I, be trouble. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like Brandon was probably always taller than Malik, and because maybe, like, he got picked on when he was younger, mm-hmm. but Brandon was always bigger, and so Brandon would be, like, his protector, and uh-huh. he's kind of still a little bit in that role, and that he stands between Malik and the rest of the text, because mm-hmm. Malik's very passionate about the work, yeah. and yeah. Brandon is the dude that's like, yo, Get you out go the over sandbox. there, <laughs> you write the thing... <laughs> I'm going to be over here telling them what to do. Right. D- and ah. Get out the right. sandbox. And get out the sandbox. Stop playing. <laughs> yeah. Stop playing. That was a thing that I picked up on one of the documentaries because one of the guys that writes the game was always messing with it. Mm-hmm. And you'd hear the one dude yell from across the room, get out of the sandbox. <laughs> Try to fix something. <laughs> So um, I was like, that has to go in the book. That has to go in the book. <laughs> I think my favorite interaction with them was when Brandon was like, so where were you last night? I love that scene. And he was like, I read that scene over and over. It's so, so um, funny. And he's like, huh? He's like, motherfucker, you ain't deaf. Huh? You heard me. <laughs> I love that scene. I said, where I love, were you? I love, and he was like, I went to see a friend. He was like, uh-huh. uh-huh. Your friend was India. And he was like, what? How you know? He's huh? like. I know you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And then he's like, well, oh, so what did, what did y'all do? And he's like, right. bro, like, ain't no way. Ain't no way. Y'all he was in the same night. room with Mm-mm. India all night. And y'all just talked. Ain't no way. Mm-mm. Nope. Nah. So nah. what time did you do the walk of shame? Because, <laughs> you know, like, you know, your brothers are going to like really... Get down right. to it, and they're gonna kneel right. you, and they're gonna get the information right. out. So, right, yeah, I and he love was like, Look, Brandon. I just want to know if I need to be happy for a nigga or not. And he was right. like, Be happy for me, fine, right, <laughs> fine, yeah, just mind your business. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love how Brandon came out. I love that brotherly relationship mm-hmm. that you know if he wasn't my brother i would fire his ass right you know right. but you know like that kind of right. grumble grumble right. mm. but he also yeah. got out the sandbox because brandon yeah was because like, brandon don't play yeah <laughs> brandon was like look telling your ass get out the sandbox and go right. get I'm gonna some start food putting, i'm gonna start putting child quits. walks on your login <laughs> yeah right so he's exactly. like fine fine off the yeah. sandbox Right, because you know who really, you know who really runs the show over there. Right, is Brandon. Yeah, <laughs> because the game doesn't come to life unless Brandon is is running the show. So Mm-mm. yeah, Mm-mm. yeah, yeah. No. I, you know, I also wanted to make sure to get you know some Atlanta in there. There's some Morehouse in there. Mm-hmm. There's some Emory University in there. There's yes. you know, I always got to drop a little Atlanta in the book. Yes. So yes. yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this is a delight. <laughs> Just a delight. Thank you so much. So tell readers where they can find your books. You can find my books at Books by D.L. White. Um, I have all of my all of them in ebook. Um, I also have print um, copies, and you can also buy audio. I have five books out in audio. You can buy those at my website there. They're also in avail- available in ebook at your favorite retail store. You can buy print copies um, at Bookshop, at my store, and also at Resist Booksellers. Um, they're like my favorite, favorite, yes. favorite black-owned bookstore. So yes. if you are in the Petersburg, Virginia area, um, roll on into Resist Books, or you can yes. shop online. Um, mm-hmm. If you are not local, you can hit bookshop.org and just tell Bookshop that you want their, because they donate as percentage of each sale to your favorite um, mm-hmm. independent bookstore. Mm-hmm. Tell them you want that money to go to your favorite or to Resist. And mm-hmm. also, if you buy my audiobooks at libro.fm you mm-hmm. can select a, a bookseller there to get a portion of your money like they do oh, at bookshop yeah okay. so now i buy all my books at libro all my audiobooks at libro if i can and a portion of my sales goes to resist booksellers um demetrius Yay. is our mutual friend he's a yes. wonderful he's a great dude super great like guy deep into books guy Mm -hmm. um and so we you know we try to pump resist hilarious he's having me laugh hilarious like (laughs) he is the tangent king though like for real you start talking about one thing and like in an hour you're talking about basketball and don't know how you got there i have no idea (laughs) 
like, how do we get on this? He's like, oh, we're talking about this, and then that, and then this, and that. He's, he is the and tangent he, he king. he tracks it all, too, and it's like... Right, he's like, and bringing it back to this. <laughs> <laughs> See, I had a plan. I had a plan I was working on, so... I know he's going to listen to this, because he also got my little dig when I said that books are... It's just paper, you guys. Yeah. I'm not all that precious about Blasphemy. it. Blasphemy. It's no just paper. He sent me video. a DM... <laughs> He mm-hmm. sent me a DM about it. He was like, I, 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 I'm very upset. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, so was I. I was like, what? I didn't even know about it till he mentioned it. I was like, what is this blasphemy you say, oh. DL? What are you doing? Yeah. I mean, I just feel like, you know, books are books. It's, it's, it's gorgeous paper. Um, but I mean, unless it's signed, I'm like, eh, I'll read it. Uh, however, however it can get into my face, I will take it. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, DL. And where can we find you on social media? I am author DL at what? What is it? Author underscore DL White on Twitter and Instagram. Um, I'm on oh. TikTok, but I don't post there anymore. My, my account is there, but I don't post there anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, I'm author DL White on Pinterest. So mm-hmm. I do have some. Um, I try to, for every book, do like a little visual. Here's my hero. Here's my heroine. Here's where they live. Here's their personal style, what they drive, etc. So that's kind of all I really do with Pinterest. So if okay. you are interested in that, um, I do keep a, kind of all that kind of stuff <clears throat> on Pinterest. Okay. Well, we have come to the end of our show. Thank you for sharing your time and talents, DL. Always Thank a pleasure. you for having me. I love this show. Oh, On Tuesday nice. morning, I'm like, is it up yet? Is it up yet? Is it up yet? Is it up yet? It's up. Hey. So then, like, I sit here at work, and I have Between the Reads on, on YouTube because I have to watch it. I like faces. Right. I have to watch it. Um, so then I always, like, I always have it up. So it's the first thing I check on Tuesday morning. I remember last week you were like, um, where, where's the episode? Is when you had Beverly like, Jenkins on, yes, I was like, where yes. is it? Where's You're the like, episode? Where is it? Where is it? Is it up? Is it up? Is it up? Is it up? I was like, almost, yeah, I just almost. could not wait. <laughs> uh, I was very excited. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, y'all know how I do at the end of every show. I leave you with a quote. And today it comes from the late Bell Hooks, author and social activist. And she said... True love does have the power to redeem, but only if we are ready for redemption. Love saves us only if we want to be saved. Until next time, y'all, you know what to do. Grab a book and read, and I'm out. Thank you for lending me your ear today. If you've enjoyed this independent podcast, you can help me continue to shine the light on Black authors and their stories by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash between the reads or by giving a one-time gift at www.kofi.com slash between the reads podcast. That's ko ficom slash between the reads podcast. Tune in next time for another great episode.